and uh, he's from my home state. How fabulous can that be? That's already fabulous home state, you know what I'm saying? All right, I'll be reading the brief profile before I invite her to come. Uh, our very first speaker today, I want to be sure that I have her profile before me, before I give her the profile of somebody else. That would be dangerous. Thank you. 
becomes a thriving story. This is a thing that comes down to me. And um, also, I think there might be a little bit of a bias in that it's a fascinating place of data. So it's not that people actually go to the hospital seeking help, that they believe to catch all people that are different, that they believe to catch all through certain but, having said that, the societal norms of the social media dictates that it's always the ones that we tend to conveniently forget the contribution that men make. Ballpark, um, 40% is ego. 40% is both male and female. And 20% is Sexes. When women have children, the center are not, that is not real properly. 
and uh, there is also there's data data that shows that this art cross demand here is marked for the definition of I just extracted the focus from the black into the black. 
best to be a Those of you not here, So the black patient reported a higher rate of sugar factors protect backgrounds of the best And compared to 18 percent in the other well, the dead group, black patients had higher sensibilities. And then it's all the over obstetrics and black patients that they knew about that before. That's the highest to be the entire group is in that system. So that's not a surprise. And the significant part that I felt and I can consider is that black patients generally start finding later than the other. Why is this important? I've tried to demonstrate from my minus factors. This is a graph of what happens for each patient success rate. That's the birth rate of embryo transfer over the years and the age of patients on that side. You can see that for the under 35, the success rate is about 32%. When you get to 35%, your success rate drops to 26%. When you get to 38%, which is where most of the black people have and minorities, it's dropped to about 90%. And if you wait until your 40th birthday, you will talk about 12%. If you were like my age, you would be superior to that way, the last one, you are talking about. Thank you. So, uh, my advice is get your um, get uh, treatment early. See, but uh, there are various things that we were going to see because I've been doing research. We did tell me we're going to see a lot of things. Um, can we go to the slide on number of IDS cycles? By egg dispersers. The best thing, you know, these are the findings. The findings you can find for us um, according to age. And um, what's in this side is that each child adhesion is the commonest uh, pathology found when the investigation is under statistical, which means the, the DLC has either been an infection or they've done, they've been too enthusiastic to be straight the line. So, if you're seeking a ratio of support, you're right, it's coming up in the slides. Next slide, please. What's the definition? We and I have talked about that. Yes, next slide, please. So, over the last 30 years, the use of donor eggs and donor sperms have increased. Um, you see the patient being the female, and the donor sperm is the highest because many. Are more accepted in their lives getting rid of it, but they don't really like this group of sperm. See, it's really down there. And this is the movement of eggs and sperm, is the least common um, treatment source. I mean, there is no sperm. So, what's the benefit of if you are struggling for four or five cycles, you can always use the eggs. That is using the patient's eggs of them, probably under the spikes. And, and look at if you look at the same page here, uh, donor eggs, the result the outcome is almost the same for age for different age groups. So between uh, 35 and 40, it makes no difference. So do not be uh, hesitant to use the donor egg if you want to. Your treatment options, the expected management, which includes spreads, tubal flushing, really not advisable, tubal surgery, when you plan for that yet, there's always room for tubal surgery, the best way in the course of tubal ovulation induction, there are very all sorts of medications that I think you must. Uh, factors that affect that, so that's um, I talked about duration of the treatment. Previous succession is equal to the end of the program, your chances are better. If you plan the program, the treatment is a little bit more challenging. Yes, sir. The going through IVF treatment has these myriads of conditions depression, anxiety, fear, um, really complicated, um, a rejection, but don't let that get you. Um, 
stress is made. And stress is your way to minimize your responding to any pressure that disrupts your normal habits. So, no matter which are the pieces of society or expectation, stop this sort of habits. And it refers to any perspective, perspective, your perspective, for the very don't meet your expectation. And you fail to manage your reaction to that disappointment. So, not everybody goes through the same thing and that is stressed. It's your perception, your reaction, which means you are able to be the manager space. What is stress to you? This is a friend in our class, and I'm going to explain It's actually impacts on your business. It produces adrenaline that we put to solve, which is stressful, is produced in adrenal glands. Adrenal glands steals a sex hormone, which is a progesterone, to produce cortisol. Um, it still suggests in your uh, sex hormones to make cortisol the stress hormone. So if you stress, your activity is impacted. Progesterone that it goes down to you, just as it goes back. For men, notice that you have no ridicule, some concentration goes down. For women, no disagreements, or blood flow to your pictures, reduce the mess of the future, which is why you will be just less taken to the spine, and not even get into the spine. Don't forget to be in sport, but it should be like it's not prepared and focused for the for the uh, network. The treatment is people are medication, I try to solve the problem. Yeah, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Let me, hello, good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Every woman 
and we all have a human right to be there to give life. And every woman that desires to have children can have children. I work with the girls of health and partners. They focus on abortion, they focus on um, uh, contraceptive. Yes, we've got 200 million people, but within us, there are people who still desire to have children. So we can channel some of those um, NGOs and partners to focus on this, particularly women who have never had children. Because particularly when cancer is in England, it's, it's been reduced. Well, let's give people a chance for us, it's preventable process for a new process. And uh, to do that, we need to call the first place. This is also very important to me. The people who live in the first place of care should be not regulated. We, because people just go to shops, they don't even have the orders. They just say they're the first place of care. So they keep to the home. They don't even identify the home. So there is an association for the first place of care. We can collaborate and make sure that they won't listen. That's, there's nothing we do for the land, sustainable finance. Um, this is a very expensive venture, so we have to work on the financial factors. And people, it's not only the rich people that have to search to have children and increase access to affordable fertility. And this can be done through the healthcare um, health insurance because every state now is meant to have a health insurance. And we can actually put a package together. That at least the basic steps, the investigative steps, could be done in the government uh, facilities and the specialist centers and the treatment. On that note, uh, the table is significant. Healthy lifestyle, stress is well, positive health, faith, or the word of God says, all things that is good. Thank you.
We are doing this in the process of becoming doctors of words. Well, that's why I predicted that by the time this program is over, some of us will have acquired doctorate degrees in Jesus' name. Uh, Dr. Jesus is shut up, but I believe we do so. Okay, so it's okay. All right. He is a master of words. I call him Lyricist, Primus, Peter P. Walker, Spoken Word Artist, Seth Ryan. Thank you so much. It's a lot of work for this also. I want to talk to you to apply for the talk. And by the end, she said, I think I've heard a lot of words today. I want to have a lot of time for a lot of things. So um, it also defined a way to make great words. So you have a white book here for the world. So yes, yes, this is a privilege to get a um, to share what you do with us. And I know that um, as well with that, it will open the conference and the conference and the conference. Then it was a table. Yes, I'm going to dance and celebrate with you in 
Jesus' name. Right now, uh, we're going to have a panel session, and this panel session is going to be made up of a uh, lot of speakers. So please uh, just uh, be ready and listen attentively. We're going to get everyone on stage because we want to manage time. Please, our speaker, we would like to read our time to like five minutes each so that everybody can be accommodated and we can get everyone out of here in good time. So, uh, their profiles are long, but uh, I'm just going to like my bridges uh, here and there, you can just bits and pieces. They will all come on stage and they will have their time to make their presentation very, very briefly. We're so sorry that we are reading some of the time it's because of the management of time. And all of you are feeling that traffic has been really bad in Lagos. We see plenty of traffic. All right, our very first uh, speaker that will join the panel is Dr. Tony Ajayi. She is the CEO of Obstetrician and Gynecologist with over 20 years of experience in clinical uh, experience in the United States, the United Kingdom. Please have us welcome. Dr. Tony Ajayi, as she comes on the stage. Thank you very much, Ryan, for agreeing to do this with us. We appreciate you. All right, our second, uh, the second person that will be on the panel, and I guarantee she has been helping us in the street and around. Please help me welcome Adiola as she joins the panel. Adiola, yes. Okay, I see a beautiful lady joining. And I like this mix because there's a nurse in this mix. Please help me welcome the Spidu as she joins the panel also. The Spidu. Wow. That's a beautiful nurse. Um, we we'll also have one more person that will be joining, and the person will be joining by Zoom. Um, so we'll need to alert her when it's time for her to speak. Uh, that would be Mrs. Akenzua. She will be joining us soon. Too. So, but we have our speakers that will be here. We will read your time, dear Madams. Apologize again. So, for the very first speaker, let me welcome uh, Dr. Tony Adai. Yes, sir. We just have five minutes. And we will show you. So that's really good to do. Right? So, 
at least you can be sure that your baby is I'm confused whether I need to start saying what we call fire because when these kinds of things are about, you start to say nothing that I am not going to say for me. But we are a very conducive atmosphere. We need to feel. Thank you very much, Dr. Mary. I'll just say that if she operates on your own, the baby will have at least, the baby will not be out of it. We teach you to be inside that child. People need to talk to people who we see together. Your child will have small sense. Ah, your family is alive and alive. Not to increase my heart for spoiling English. Very well. Thank you so much. We need so much education back in teachers a few minutes. We wish we had a lot of time, you know, to help them expand on some of this thing that we put together. But if you do have questions, we're going to have a question and answer session. And we're going to invite our dear uh, Dr. Goga to come back to the panel so that he can answer a couple more questions. So please, if you're a parent here or you want to get additional information, please write down your question. We're just going to take a few. Take back to our portion. Portion, please wait. Then we'll take the questions from you so that we can relate them when the time the question and answer is ready. We'll take them. So please, let's do that very quickly. All right, we're going to be listening to uh, our dietitian, Ms. Adiola. Please take a few more Now, we have things like protein, we have things 
like our planner Anna. It's a very sober Bible. And one thing is, one of the Christians, the first thing that they put out there, they are always calling me of internet is avoid carbohydrates. You actually need carbohydrates. So we have oats milk, we have amada, we have plantains, we have food for sure, but we have sweet potatoes. Another thing you need to add to your diet is fruits. If you have Christians, you will have heard someone tell you, Fruit has too much sugar, but it is actually not true. Fruit has just the right amount of sugar that you need, as long as you consume it whole. Some people would take a um, orange and squeeze out the water. The fact is, you should not be doing that. You should be eating the fruit whole so that you get in all the nutrients that is in the fruit, including the fiber and all the vitamins. The next thing that you need to add to your diet is vegetables. And we have a lot of vegetables on the table, but what we think is cabbage, carrots, green peas. But even our own soups, our African soups that are in vegetables, will start to work for counting on vegetables. If you do not like to eat cabbage or carrots, you can make a big pot of vegetables so you can add everything that you eat. Why is this important? Vegetables are very low in carbohydrates and they are also a slow type of carbohydrates, which means that when you eat them, your blood sugar does not spike as much. We bring it back to women who have PCS being at the risk of diabetes. So you need to consume foods that will not make your blood sugar spike all the time. The next thing you need to add to your diet is protein. And what is protein necessary? Research has shown that women who consume more plant proteins also have better fertility outcomes. Plant proteins like beans, plant proteins like soya beans, so you can add it to that. Dimensional fish general, fish is also a good addition. You can have meat, although meat, you shouldn't have too much meat, you can have a limited number of meats, free with meat. Because meat is one of the greatest sources of iron. And women who are trying to reproduce actually need iron. So if you want to balance it out, you can have maybe bread meat also twice a week. And balance the meaning meat your plant protein with the beans, the soya beans, or fish, and even white meat like chicken or water. The next thing is you need to fix the digestive system. And that a lot of health issues can be connected to something for our health, which is your digestive system. And how do you fix your digestive system? There are two ways. Number one, you need to increase the good bacteria in your digestive system by taking a probiotic. And then you need to feed that good bacteria by taking a prebiotic. So, what are the what are examples of the probiotics that you can take? You have to go on. Yogurt is a very good example. Another good example that will surprise you is Eba, Gary, which is fermented. So it's a good source of probiotic. Praise the Lord. Eba, no, that's just hallelujah. So to feed the good bacteria, you need to give it something. So for example, we have those like beans and apples. They are very good food for the bacteria in the system. In a way, you should try as much as possible to have at least two to three or four servings of yogurt. I'm not saying yogurt. I'm talking about copper yogurt. I'm not mentioning brand food. No yogurt should not be like copper white yogurt. Those are the best sources of the products. Another thing you need to add to your diet is supplements. And I will mention one more supplement, just to be that. Which is vitamin D. Vitamin D is both the hormone and the vitamin. Vitamin D, women stress usually sometimes, I would say usually sometimes, are deficient in vitamin D. And research has shown that this vitamin D can help better fertility outcomes. Although the soil is like the greatest source of vitamin D, and that is what I'm saying, you get a lot of vitamin D. But you need to get a supplement. The last thing I'll talk about is sex. And to be in two ways. Number one, please, if you have PCS, 
stress. Do not over exercise. When you over exercise, you don't stress. When you stress, you can so let you go. And maybe if you're going to use more antigens, it is going to be worse. So, as much as possible, just minimal exercise. Number one, add a balancing exercise. Balancing exercise is like yoga. If you go to YouTube, you get a lot of yoga exercises. Number two, you should ask the guy to strengthen your exercise, sorry. It's strength training. You can lift your weights two times a week. Number three, you need to be walking. Even if it's two times a week as well, you can do that. Then, um, last but not least, there are some things you should also have to relax. For example, I mentioned two of them. Um, you have spear weights and heavier weights. Um, and flat seats, sorry. These three things have been shown to be the average levels of the world this year. And the less average levels you have, the better your chances of fertility. So you cannot go into the supermarket and say you want to buy a pet and for scare me seed and get a flat seed seed. You can add it to your food. It is very, very important. And for this, I mean, I can bring all those things to an end. Thank you. I really don't do any person that wants to have. Put your hands together for the attention of your life. You know, some of the wonderful things I think is that we're so quick to demonize everything African food. All you need to do is get knowledge on what it is or what it does. A lot of us we get our knowledge from several marketplaces. Many of them are not professionals. They just tell you things and you won't bother to ask the right people. Do you know these kinds of people like that in Shabadiola? They exist in some government hospitals. Yeah. I mean, so even if you cannot afford a private nutritionist, if you go to a government hospital, I'm sure they have like a nutritionist somewhere, in some corner. I believe it's a hard. I hope my member for authority is wrong. Because I'm really trying to impress them with knowledge. You know, but you see, they keep telling us that vegetables are not just cabbages. It's not just carrots. Our fugu, our grain. We have so many beautiful little grains in Africa that we can actually eat that will be good for us in our system. Thank you so much. Very, very interesting. I have a couple of questions here. So if you still have questions, please send me your questions. Because once I come to the book, they are just going to answer the questions once and for all, and that will be the end of it. All right, right now, please can I start getting this content so I'm ready? Uh, because after um, the stage, we will be taking our own to uh, talk. Please can we have the stage you come? I remember she mentioned someone and shower. Someone is for rich people, shower is more important. <laughs>
Okay, so I want to talk about the emotional health. Before I talk about the emotional health, I'd like us to distinguish distinguish between mental health and emotional health. Mental health involves the processing of all the information we encounter, while emotional health is more about the feelings provoked by the data process. Now, I'd like to call mental health the hardware, while the emotional health is the software. See, emotional health is an important part of the world. People who are emotionally healthy are in control of their thoughts, feelings, and behavior. That is not to say that they don't get angry. They get angry when they have gained mastery. But the woman has said, for part of my I am sure she will speak, but I prefer to say. So, emotional health, I want us to keep in mind that emotionally healthy people can tell when a problem is more than they can handle on their own, and they know when to speak. These are the world. We don't believe that we should seek help. In other words, it's not like this message. My own problem may be very poor by myself and by myself. I want to tell you to me, you are not alone. We are all here, but I want to support you. And by God's grace, you will achieve it. So I pray for you. Now, good emotional health doesn't protect you from tough situations, like I mentioned earlier. It only helps you to handle them in the third. Enough has been said about fertility, so I'm not going to be this way. Okay? Fertility is a natural capacity to conceive the child. However, fertility does not come easily to everyone. Fertility or infertility is not limited to a specific gender. Which is what Dr. Lucasson mentioned when she said, causes can be from a woman, it can be from a man, and it can be combined factors. Sometimes you have unexplained factors. So, if a is set to go home, when it is difficult to reproduce naturally. Now, putting together your emotional health and fertility, most studies reported that women seeking treatment for fertility have an increased rate of depressive symptoms and possibly major depression. However, not just elevated mood, evaluated mood conditions, was discovered that depressive symptoms. Could increase the rate of fertility treatment. Here, yeah, I want to cite a real life experience that I had. It's, you know, this uh, couple in Canada, the fertility issue I think we're from six years in America, six years. And um, the woman began to cite that is what school business will do. Some business will feel bad, she's not the child of God. How can she be suicidal? I know that I'm asking. It is starts in the morning. It's a continuum. Started from yesterday and week. Gradually, gradually, gradually. We are able to go through some social security. And I'm glad to say that she is not um, emotionally healthy as she used to be. So I'm not going to continue. Okay. A range of existing studies suggests that fertility and mood disorders are related in a complex way. Anxiety has a significant relationship with the duration of infertility. Now, in, with the duration of infertility. Now, in this study, it was shown that people who have been married between four to six years and have not had children. You see, they, are, they tend to be more depressed. They tend to be depressed. While those ones who have waited longer years are at higher risk, you know, of developing severe depression. A lot of studies are actually being carried out there, but however, most of the data they are not narrowed down to Nigeria. That's why you will see a lot because we don't have a lot of data and we get a lot of studies that are different. So, so sorry. Yes. So they said also that after three years, the optimistic attitude of the couple will change to despair. And at last, there will be some emotional change that when you're feeling that, okay, at this point, it's looking like it's not going to happen. So at this point, you start taking a decision you know, to adopt the child or better to stay without the child and say, okay, let me wait for the boy. Those who have social support, positive personal characteristics, and a satisfactory life with their spouse show no sign of anxiety or depression. 
So this goes back to that initial picture I showed you. You cannot be a book when you're in this journal. You cannot say that you're able to read. This does not have a stone that in the very large extent that support is necessary and needed. So I have published data from a study carried out on the South of Nigeria. Look at the anxiety level of people who's going to the mutual competition. They simply reported that the anxiety level increased with each stage. And the summary of the study was that the expectation for positive outcome was the main source of anxiety among the participants. So the emotions associated with negativity come from inside out. And they are like expectations, expectations from people around you, racial strain, financial strain, of course, that will make it has been taken away. So in this case, when you find yourself in this area, what you do is identify and name your feelings. Probably the fear of being judged or the fear of being inadequate. What are the feelings about? Where are they coming from? To whom are they connected? All these thoughts are the same emotions and you know, can help you talk to someone. Counseling is a vital role when it comes to the things. And not be over exercise. And this is a situation where um, people are given the opportunity to space be able to express themselves. So these are the benefits of counseling. Counseling is a therapy in which is anxiety about the treatment. It's also a form of sin. It increases self-confidence, it helps foster better relationships. Sometimes during counseling, you you know. Counsel points introduce you into the support group, and this goes a long way you know, to relieve your stress and it also helps you in trauma resolution. Now, I'm talking about creating a coping strategy that is emotional focused. You need to practice self care. A lot of people who are going through infertility issues are giving up on life, they don't want to do good, they are just there, they are just there. So I want to tell this morning that one of the steps to learn, one of the ways to learn from is to practice self-care. Enjoy being who you are, be comfortable in your own skin. Someone wants to know how to talk, it's a shame that we have a child. You know, don't put your life on hold. Stress yourself. Some person in that career, I will put on hold because of this investment institution. Do the things you like to do. You want to take some courses, take those courses. You want to travel? Travel. Manage those dark feelings. Everybody can know the next to you. That's the truth. And that's the reason why you're saying that you have to be emotionally healthy. What's the emotionally healthy? Regardless. Hope you think that is high and health is 
needed. I want to encourage you today that you should find most of the participants at Marcellus, the psychologists, make maximum use of them. You are not the men who are in this reading. I live in this church. It's up to you today to start making healthy decisions, not choices that are just healthy for your body, but choices that are also healthy for your mind. Thank you. I am I own them? 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 Am I Hello. 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 <coughs> Hello. Oh, okay. I understand I'm being heard now. Well, I want to wish you all a very... Oh, may I start by wishing everybody a very good morning. Uh, Pastor Itwa, uh, God bless you for what you're doing, what you do always and uh, continue to do. We appreciate you very much. I'd like to thank the Ibiduni Godalo Foundation for inviting me to be on today. And uh, my name is Emma Akenzo, as you heard. I'm the very proud mother of two beautiful, amazing children, both given to us by God. One came through biologically and the other one through adoption. And um, they have both enriched our lives tremendously. If God asked us how he would want us to send our children, I'm sure without any doubt, my husband and I would say, do it exactly how you've done it. I will just tell you my story very briefly. I'm conscious of the fact that time is um, uh, very short. I faced, uh, uh, or rather I went through several years, seven years to be exact, of waiting for a child. 
And um, it was seven difficult years, so I understand exactly what you're going through. I had four miscarriages. I was told that I could not carry a child to full term uh, because I had an incompetent cervix. But um, eventually the child did come, thank God. But uh, in the process of that, I lost uh, a set of twins and um, one at uh, 10 weeks, the other one 22 weeks. And eventually, well, the child was born at 22 weeks, but lived for 90 minutes and uh, went to be with her maker. Very painful experience. So I do not at all take lightly this responsibility. Adoption had always been something my husband and I wanted to do when we met ourselves, but I believe that the challenges we had pushed it up front uh, somewhere. I, I hope I'm still being heard. It's funny talking to yourself. Um, now, the topic I have been given to talk on today is an, um, adoption as an option. Now, for some people, adoption will be an option, but for some others, it would be a fulfillment of purpose. And basically what I mean by that is that God has allowed some of you to get to where you are now for a purpose, and the purpose being to adopt a child. Now, if you consider the fact that um, I'll take us to two Bible personalities, very prominent, Moses and Esther. Both of them were adopted. Now, Pharaoh's daughter had to adopt Moses as a way of God divinely positioning Moses in the palace to learn the tricks of Egypt to be able to come one day and deliver God's people from 430 years of captivity. The same with Mordecai. Mordecai had to adopt Esther for Esther to move from where she was, her biological family, to Mordecai, who would instruct her properly as to how to live her life, get into the palace. And even when she thought she was in the palace to be a beautiful woman just sitting there, he made her go and talk to the king and was able to save Israel from annihilation. So what am I saying? That yes, for some people, adoption might be an option, but for some other people, it is not going to be an option. It is exactly what God wants you to do. Is my daughter whom I adopted an option? Was she an option? Definitely not. She was a fulfillment of purpose. She needed to be moved from where she was to where she is right now to fulfill the purpose for which God has ordained for her. And um, you know, it's not a light responsibility because what God is saying is that there's somebody, some of you out there have what it takes to raise a child in the way God wants that child to be raised, to fulfill the purpose for which God has brought the child to this world. So yes, your situation is painful. Yes, your situation is difficult, but it is for a purpose such as this. And for those who adoption is not an option, you know what I'm talking about. You've been procrastinating, you've been dragging your feet, but God wants you to take that decision right away and move that child from where that child is to where the child must be to fulfill the purpose for which God has brought the child. Now, adoption as an option has lots of benefits and I would recommend it to as many of you as are out there, but I also understand the fact that not everyone can love a child that doesn't come from their womb the way they ought to. And, you know, don't feel condemned, it's fine. So adoption is not for everybody. But for those who want to consider adoption, I highly recommend it. And it's got lots of benefits. Number one, you don't have to go through the wahala of nine months, all of this running up and down, seeing doctors here, being poked here and there. I went through it for seven years, difficult place to be. So adoption is easy. You go in, choose the child. I mean, yes, we understand that there are procedures in Lagos states and processes that you have to go through. But a second benefit of adoption is the fact that you can choose the sex. You can't do that when you're having a child biologically. The third option, the third benefit of adoption is the fact that you can also choose the age that your child is. So if you spent all of this five years waiting for a child, you can actually make up for the time that you have uh, wasted, so to say, and choose to adopt an older child, a child who's seven, eight, 10, whatever. And um, there's so many other things that you stand to benefit by adoption. Now, I know the thing most people fear about adoption. They would say to me, 
ah, what if the child is a mad woman's child? Um, I don't know the history of the child. What if this, what if that? And the answer I always give is, what do you know is in your bloodline? It is only when you give birth to a child that is challenged physically or in whatever way that the doctors begin to ask questions and you go back and ask and find out that somewhere in your family line, there was a problem. So if you trust God and you have a relationship with God, there's nothing to fear in adoption. Adoption is beautiful. It's very rewarding. And like I said earlier, we really don't remember one of our children <laughs> was adopted. So do not have any fear. In conclusion, I want to say to all of you there that I know it's a difficult journey. I've been there nights of crying, nights of pain, tears, doctors doing this and doctors doing that. You can start the journey to parenthood today. The choice is yours. And that's by going to the Ministry of Youth and Social Development, picking up a form and beginning that journey of preparing to have your child. And another benefit is you can actually choose the time your child comes. That's in your hands to a large extent. Yes, I know Alausa has a lot to do with it. So I want to wish you all very well and uh, stay prayerful, stay in touch with God, look deep into your heart and, and hear God, what God is saying to you specifically, you know, and um, like I said, there's no difference really between biological and not. It's actually the environment and the values that you put into the child that matter. And I cannot end this without quickly, you know, um, saying that I really do continue to respect Pastor Ibidun for setting up this foundation and particularly because she did it at a time when she was challenged, most of us start foundations after we have received the blessing, but we know that that wasn't the case. She started it right in her pain and forever this will be worthy of applause. God bless you all. Thank you. You just need to look inside yourself and be sure what your family needs. I think the problem with us in Africa is basically cultural. Sometimes you don't have any problem with it. You just think of what people will think. And I tell you that I know, if I'm not exaggerating, I know 10 families who have adopted children. I'm talking about children in their 30s, 40s now. And if you see their parents, Except you know what happened initially. You, you probably would not even know that they were adopted ever. I like this scripture. You remember when a uh, neighbor was doing any harm and they said she put the spotted and the speckled. I somehow think that when a child beholds a face constantly, they become like one. Experiential. I have seen couples that live together and start to look alike. I don't know the science to it, but I just know that I saw that in scripture and the only thing that the, the animals did when they were mating was to look at what was before them. And they said they produced after what they saw. So you need to sit down and take away African mentality. How many of you want to travel abroad? Do you want to go to America, Canada? Who wants to travel? Ah! Yes. Some people are hiding there. But you know again, the print in Nigeria and there is different. So are you going to tell me that in four winter you are still going to wear sleepers? Because you love sleepers. You have to learn. God will teach you. I'm telling you. The first time I traveled abroad, I never understood what wearing that cloth meant until your hand became frozen. I can't shout it. I can't do my hand. I can't do my hand. You need to enlighten your mind. And it's an option for some people. So please take advantage if it is an option for you. At this very juncture, I'm going to invite our delectable professional counsel who will say, Yes, I'm telling you, you can to be joining us back on stage. Wow. This is a very important time because they will be answering questions. So please, if you are sending your questions, can I have questions? And please can all
the balance our bikes so that uh, we can move very quickly. And um, everyone who's got a question is directed to can answer appropriately and a good time.
Yeah. So, Sometimes it's a course by a woman 
the EBA Global Foundation is a non-profit organization created to raise awareness on issues pertaining to infertility and to provide grants for couples that require fertility treatment, such as the in vitro fertilization, the intrauterine insemination, and as over the years there is a conversation around fertility. Our founder was passionate about how many are women to look at. She was a gracious helper and problem solver. Gifted to bring emotional healing, supporting women and families, through counseling and support. Her last wish before she passed on on the 14th of June 2020, just before her 40th birthday, was to help 40 couples that she their dream, hence the birth of the 40 at first project. Her father was quite passionate about her city, giving hope to as many as possible, and leading the conversation around her city and parenting. It was on the path of actualizing the second year of the project 2014 and third parents in waiting conference that I joined in. And it's to this regard I say it is quite humbling to join in at this time as we look to continue the legacy. A founder person is a large monkey wore a big mighty shoe. No one can fit into. I can only rely on God's grace to continue my quota to the foundation and to the great work that lies ahead. To this, I would like to thank the Chairman and President of Pastor Itori Bidalu, distinguished board members, members of the Board of Trustees, and the IAF team for taking a chance on me. I am indeed grateful for the opportunity and pray for grace to uphold and continue the legacy. So here are my reports. The current waiting conference called as it won. This conference is a yearly event organized by the foundation which aims to create, which aims to create awareness on rising causes of infertility, its early detection and the like. The theme of this year's event is continuing the legacy. This theme we hope will register in the hearts of men that the project Fossil and Fossil has come to stay and that the foundation will continue to honor the beautiful legacy of our founder. Our partner clinics will also, are also in attendance and we um, want to say thank you to all. All our previous donors who have, um, through your donations, we, we are able to accomplish the dreams of our founder. Last year's Foxy at 40 has made a lasting impact on families and we are able to support the Foxy couples. So far, we recorded eight positive pregnancies. Some of which are multiple conceptions. We are optimistic that all families will be blessed with their own children. The Parents in Waiting Conference is one of those that we sent letters of solicitations and support, and we also designed um, links, partnership links, where you can click on these links and then you, know, you are able to contribute your own. So we have these things on our website. I want to encourage us to visit our website so that you can also fill up the partners form. It's not a long thing, it's something that you can write in it's easily do. So the links can also be shared via WhatsApp. Talking about the interview process and medical appointment schedule. This process officially began on the 10th of September 2021 from a pool of over 40. After which the interview, medical screening and over 75 couples were called from within and outside Lagos, and the basic criteria for this years of marriage, there was a minimum of five years of marriage, and also try to give uh, preference to people that are quite old in marriage. Age, she said, not more than 50. Children, those this year, those who had no children, so that we can give them, um, give more people opportunity, income, financial capability, while the foundation was taking care of the idea part. We also hope that when children are born, you know, our parents can very well cater for them through the help of God. The marital state was married. So for as many people that are experiencing process, we tell that you have to see your, your wedding photographs to show that you are really married. And others that believe some people who do not believe in the idea of 
instead of just saying, oh, this good, you know, because um, a challenge for us to move forward. If you don't believe in a system of good health care, okay, it's basically, yeah, basically limiting us to taking it further on the journey of IDS or IAI. So this condition was said to be given to give more chances to the conception through. So all of the people who were medically trained and tested with minimal or no complications made the key for the project for the We wish to have as many applicants chosen. However, at the moment we are focused on giving grants to the number we can by God's help care for. While we did our best to attain the fourth month before the parents and wedding conference, we consider the search for the remaining three as proof that indeed the screening process was in state. Only those who make it through all the states successfully will be given the grants. While acknowledging the power of the Almighty, who is able to give miracles beyond grants to those who were not selected, we have seen miraculous conceptions happen, and we very much believe this for all our couples. The interview process are meant to have So, on the other set clinics and the facilities clinics we shall be working with for this year's.
tem sal, já está bom. Tem sal, só se assume. Mas, é... Time God, tem que ir lá. Time, tem que ir. But actually, the point was to say that it's not the jobs. But it was just something that can't be really exposed after that. I said, yes, no, we're passing nothing. So I must certify this foundation for such a thing. They were there in the forest. Because apart from that, it's not that out of so many people that it's just said that you're not sure of us. That out there is not the same. Yes, sir. 
understand and share this experience and just not believe it. I'm here to tell you that this man will be like, is it real? But I would say <laughs> I experienced it too, so I can say it is real. And that was how it continued, you know.
the Jagalitos. So it was just for me to do a thing, a plantation or something. Transfer. And she got pregnant. He said, when they said that, they, they, that she thought she had malaria, and they said that, like, they just did all the tests. That when she saw pregnancy, they said positive. She went and started writing terrible letters to the hospital. That did not ask you for pregnancy tests. I want a malaria test. And my sister, when she got the test, they said that's what they saw. She now went to a local test, set test set around Jack Monday, just to be sure that the hospital, the, the lab is not top notch. So if they want to make me say, let them in. And it came out positive again. She has a child now. And I'm telling you, it was so real for me that I was afraid. So it's about to be so real for some of you here today. Are you excited? You know, I want to cry at this for you next year. Like 40 old and 40 mothers, you don't have 40 children, 40 women, 40 children, 40 women. Pastor has to be a carry them on you, Christy, put to wife, and you know, one hour I see them kids. I mean, you know, you have three babies. I'm sorry, I want to pass on this to go for you to have two, three times four. That's a lot of hours there, and I don't want to be having a job. So, three beds, the Lord, that's what we want to say. In Jesus' name, bless. So we're going to be calling some wonderful parents to be coming here up to tell us their experience. Please have you put your hands together for the humorous. Where are they? Yes, sweet parents. Yes, they are already, they are ready to share their testimonies. I'm so excited to hear it. We also have the Hessians here. Where are the Hessians? The Hessian family. Uh, we are two of them here. We wanted three, but I'm not sure the third couple are here. Uh, where are the Hessians? Are they here? Okay. Uh, I think that's the uh, Himere. Okay. Let's have me come in quickly to uh, the podium. Yes, what my Jessica is. Put your hands together for our wonderful mommy. Yes. She's going to tell us very, very quickly her own experience and uh, we'll be done with it. Thank you. I'm going to 
places. In short, there was a village that was arranged. They, they stay used to fix home where they do massage. In short, I can't even step by step in that village for like four days. I, I, I don't know why I didn't look in the picture so that I can see the kind of place I went to. Why? I'm not looking for something. I went there, they, they massage, they paint the loan something. Initially, um, I, um, I don't even want to come out to tell my story. But who, uh, whatever people want to say, they used to say one page in English. Who is that one head? What do people want to talk? What's going on? You don't help me. But come and tell my story. For several good years, we were hoping. We were hoping. We have done so many things, so many tests, so many apps. In short, all the tests that we did, I'm a medical personnel. All the tests that we did was okay. My husband and I were okay. So what's the cause of this infertility? Only God knows. But we keep praying. So when this uh, grant, um, I don't even know if you need from anywhere. It was when you after, after she died. That is when I knew her. So when we were talking about this 40, uh, 40 by 40, right? I was like, Papa was on the music CSTV. They were talking about it that one person per state. I was like, this one, no way. One person per state. They were only choosing the people that they want. I just, it was the last day. I just, I, I, I went, I filled the form. The last day, I never wanted to fill. I filled the form. I didn't go let my husband know. I took one of his pictures to form a, a DT to form a passport and all that. I shall fill it. Then I later told him that I feel the call to so went. I was happy that he was even ready. So we went and that's like how we joined the events. We were choosing. I don't know the person that is happening there. And she told me one thing. She said, You say you are going to carry your baby. Because I saw the ground, like, okay, what did you 
see people that they will be. This was the last day I filmed the floor and God showed up. I don't know what to say. So what do you have to say to people who still do not see the idea? People who to say the natural laws, the natural process. What do you have to say to them? See, there are people that will be, that will get pregnant naturally. There are people that there are people that go use adoption to do this. Everyone that you know that God wants you to do, the God wants for you, who wants for you. I hear what? This is the first attempt and our spirit. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Everybody that has 
make this possible deserves a huge round of applause. So please do join us for that. Um, I'm just here to say congratulations to every single person that has benefited from this program. I just want to say thank you, Papa, for carrying on this dream. I know it's not been easy, but you pulled through, and I look forward to many more success stories in the years to come. And thank you to every single person that has volunteered and everybody that has put in so much work to ensure we're standing here today. Um, yo, this is Mama's victory. I remember that day she's like, oh, is he ready? You went that far, you I said, no, we're not ready. We're not ready, but God was ready. And she's named after Mama Ibidori. I think it's Ibidori as well. So this is Mama Ibidori. And I think it's so emotional to me that I'm standing here at our event with her baby. And me, baby. So, I want to say that God will continue to prosper this foundation. And I brought my testimony for today. My miracle baby, my perfect baby, born on the 7th of July 2021. She's perfection. And I use her as a point of contact to every single person that is waiting on God. I pray and declare that God will open the windows of heaven unto you. It will pull your blessings, it will open your womb. And by this time next year, you will be standing. And if you that all that did for me will do for you in multiple forms in Jesus' name. I use myself as a point of contact and I decree that it will be so perfect. It will be so perfect beyond human understanding in Jesus' name. And we are asking for 40, but I know God is doing more than 40 by a special grace. By this time next year, we will have many more success stories in Jesus' name. So cheers to the to the Godalu Foundation and cheers to all the babies that we are expecting. God bless you, God keep you. Thank you, Papa. I love you. Wow. I'm so jealous. If we had a stillborn baby, a miracle baby, a baby. But we are old now. So let us speak to Grandpa Titus. I shall be here to help you carry the babies. You know, I will be available for mobile duties for a service, a service charge. No, it's not like it's not like I'm greedy. How much is it? Just three minutes to think of the baby for three hours. That's it. Three days now. I'm the chief of Google specialist. I'm specialized in city language television where your baby is crying in accidents. <laughs> yes, we're well, going to be here to rejoice with you. And everything will be filled with laughter and joy. This is an auspicious moment, the moment that makes your heart beat very fast because announcements are about to be made for the parents that will be rejoicing and getting the grants for this year, the Baby Rubalo Foundation grant for IDF. I know that many parents will be like, their hearts will be in their mouth, but I trust God that God knows how to choose right. So, whether you've chosen today or not, I know that there is divine purpose in every single day. So you're going to rejoice, you're going to be happy, and God is going to perfect all that concerns you. Please help me make God of grace. Yes. And our Papa, yes, the chairman of the foundation. This is the moment I will be making announcements. So fasten your faith seat belt and be ready to shout for joy. Amen.
So you just turn the laptop, the battery power laptop in here. But just glue and then the laptop must sleep. But the script is there. Please put your hands together for all the couples. We're super excited. Wow. I'm already. I cannot wait. 
because we're going to be having amazing testimonies come out of this in Jesus' name. So, Mrs. Amy Falashani, Mrs. Kalejai Obufunayam, Mrs. Oyuyu Obite, Mrs. Afalayo, Mrs. Olaye Nukaya Adichimo, Mrs. Yvonne Achenyo Mali, Mrs. Sekinos Mora Sarmi, to present this award of the following one, Dr. Mrs. Stoker. Put your hands together for all the couples who have a photo up. We know it is going to end in praise in Jesus' name.
put your hands together for all the couples. We know God is going to show you some story on their behalf in Jesus' name. All the couples, please can you be all standing if you are not on stage so that Pastor Ruth can be declared a blessing. Please let's make welcome Pastor, the beautiful, amazing, totally gorgeous Pastor Ruth Essia. She will be pronounced the blessing upon all our new intended mothers and fathers. You better receive it. 
Pastor Ruth is a master of multiples. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Um, I'm supposed to pray, but uh, give me a bit of encouragement. I want to thank God for the grace and the strength. I want to thank God that the legacy continues. I appreciate again the chairman, the board of trustees, the supporters, all the givers. Even you that you are here expecting God to touch you, I appreciate you for coming. We thank God. We thank God for our MC. We thank God for the Embarrassed Sea and the Red Tablets. One of the things I want you to know is that it's not every time there's a delay that there's an enemy behind it. It can be God Himself for a reason that He might tell you and might not tell you. Most times, We just said it's one witch, it's one wizard. So I want to encourage you, after you leave this place today, make it an habit to say to God, why am I being delayed? I also want you to know that God himself delayed Abraham and Sarah. He delayed them for a reason. Delayed Zacharias, Elizabeth, for a reason. All because he wanted John the Baptist to be six months older than Jesus. This couple had to wait for Mary to be born, to be old enough, and then to be pregnant by the Holy God will never fail him. That I know. He's too faithful. He's not faithful. And God will always keep to his promise. And one of his promises to see you through the storm, not to stop the storm. You need to have that understanding. And God is always faithful and will keep his promise. Another promise he says to tell you, he will keep you safe through the storm. He might not stop the storm. He says to tell you that even when you call on him, he does not mean that there will be no challenges. But it will only increase your strength to go through the challenges. As I pray for you today, I want you to know that we start a mysterious law. First, I hear she got pregnant. And there were people that went through it 13 times. Maybe for them, he just wanted them to, in this thing here, go and adopt the child. I'll give you your own I'll just go and adopt. There's a child I have sent into this world, and I want you to take care of the child. And because the person is not listening, going through first idea, then no idea. So it's important that you combine the two. Don't feel bitter. Don't be sad. Don't look at your past. You have passed, that's why you are in the present. God also wants me to tell you that you are not stopping from going through the tunnel, but you walk with you through the tunnel. This is the way they can. The other is in the place So I've come to encourage you. I'm going to be praying. Do you know recently I was teaching in a couple, one of the trademark of Ruth is here, teaching in a couple, 14 people got pregnant, including the pastor wife that was. 42 at that time, and already has five children. She was busy living her head pastor. You could be left alone. What shall they say? Okay. And then suddenly they started getting pregnant, and she called the pastor. What did you do as I did when it is a grace attached to my ministry? I teach relationship, I teach marriage, and I'm passionate about the success of people's marriages. So I come under that unction. I come under that anointing. That the Lord that did it, 14 people, and I was just teaching, teaching you and go to the company and say, God, ah, you are pregnant already, and it's happened. I pray for you if you believe that it shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Yeah. We have the testimony of someone that did it first. Yours shall be so in the name of Jesus. And God is the lawyer in the courtroom. They took your room there. They took your case there. Jesus will answer them in the name of Jesus. Is the doctor in the sick room? He will stand there, and when they are doing transfer or injecting you, and he thing is a bit, he has his own. But the Lord God Almighty Himself will use His hand to do the transfer. The Lord Jesus. 
So he says, I'm talking to the couple here, so it, and so it bountifully, not sparingly. Because if your cloud is full, it will draw rain. A strong scripture that God gave me, and also when Papa Itwa was um, blessed in the 50th birthday minister in the church yesterday, I read it so I wanted to go with you. First, the one he gave me, he says, we will be there young for an hour with joy coming in the morning. And then he gave this one to, to him and I got it. He says, but the God of all grace, first we got the five verse 10, but the God of all grace, whom has called us unto his eternal glory. So to be pregnant and have your child, is not glory, it's not for man. So he will take his glory. And the grace of God shall not be there. He says, Oh, after that you have suffered a while, there are some people that they are that in while. That means there's a while. And that's why I come to an end now. It says, after you have suffered a while, make you perfect. Now the prayer is coming. Make you perfect. Stabilize you. Strengthen you. Settle you. In the name of Jesus. Your mind, your body, your woman, I declare strengthened by the power of your own son. I declare strengthened by the power of your son. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those that were pointing at you in this day, many times they come in this category, they are living in the moment of my body. I'm telling you the truth. Those that have looked at you in this day, they will use that same look, that same figure to point. Jesus Christ, as I 
I leave this place now? Because I wash everything I don't wash it. Father, don't call on my team. I didn't have to wait to conceive. It's a grace you gave me. I'm asking for that favor. For everyone that has been given the grant, let it be their first and only time.